for the worst, uh, hope for the best, and if the board um, doesn't make the objective decision, which is this is unjustified termination, uh, we'll appeal this district court. What's next? How long does it take for them to decide? Sometimes they decide, um, you know, when they go into their executive session, they'll make a decision. If they do, at the very least, what I ask them to do, which is to review the pleadings, review our proposed findings of law, our proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law, which incidentally, the city's submission referenced Officer Doyle, not Officer Wooler. Um, but if they review that, then I think you know the facts and law support Officer Wooler's reinstatement. So they could make a decision today. They they could. Um, I'm probably I'm. You know, I, I don't know, I'm totally speculating as to what they'll do. But in the past, they typically make it after their executive session. But I think, obviously, with what you saw in there, um, they'll probably give it a little bit of extra effort. So. Where is he now? He's a, he's a crop insurance adjuster in Texas. So he's out dealing with the messes that the tornado has made. So he's out literally working in the fields. Uh, one of them asked you, why has this taken so long? It has taken a really it long time. It has taken a very long time. And no easy explanation for that? We had um, our first, well, until I came on board as uh, Officer Woolever's counsel, we had a setting, um, I believe, last May, and that got vacated. And then we had a setting in August, and that got vacated. And it wasn't because of us. We were ready to roll and ready to go. And the city kept vacating it. Um, the August setting, this is again last year, uh, was vacated because the primary detective in this matter, Jason Peck, uh, apparently had a, a surgery that the f city failed to notify us about. So we moved to exclude him as a witness because he had notice and he scheduled this, you know, this surgery and through no fault of her own, the, the hearing officer granted the city's um, effort to vacate it. And so we finally had it in November. So would Mr. Willover come back and take a job with APD if, if his termination is overturned? I think what he would he would do is come back so that his name is cleared uh, collect all the benefits that are due to him between his separation back in November 2011 and now, and then resign. That's what I think, too. He still has law enforcement in his blood. We still have the issue to deal with um, the State Law Enforcement Academy and certification, and he would want to be a cop in Texas. But I think his days with Albuquerque are undesirable for him. This has to be resolved first before his certification can be resolved? No, it's two separate issues. Okay, yeah. and what's the latest with that, his certification? Um, we'll be appealing it directly to the Law Enforcement Academy Board and hope we have a more favorable forum than what happened with their, you know, the unjust uh, default revocation that they did during that time. I mean, they didn't even give him a chance um, to have his hearing. Do you know when that is? When you look we at will. Uh, it'll be this summer. So there's a setting this June. We won't be petitioning in front of the board at that setting. We'll be doing it after. So probably September, October. And what's happening with Doyle? Because I know you're representing him too. Just where is he? Doing? Um, we are. Um, we're in district court. We're in the state court of appeals. Um, we're again. We're not. A, we're not giving up, and we're going to exhaust every avenue because I think. So far as we've seen, the claim that we initially made, which was these guys were thrown under the bus as scapegoats so that Schultz could evade having his department scrutinized by DOJ, is starting to play out, as we saw in the state auditor's report, that there are reasons why Schultz did not want DOJ to come in. And, you know, you know granted, there's a very public sensational event. We had two officers, you know, using a high degree of force on a subject that looked bad. There's no dispute that looks bad, but, you know, shooting someone looks bad. Okay. The fact is, Bloom was not harmed in any significant way, 
and he was booked that night and he's now sentenced um, but what we said all along and what I saw all along when I was a, a, a administrative rep for officers was I couldn't believe the degree of scrutiny that they were applying to these guys nothing they did was right whereas all the other cases I had you know they're bending over backwards to find oh there's a reason why you're throwing up you're sick right you know when they might have been intoxicated or there's a reason why that plasma TV wasn't tagged into evidence you, know, you forgot right you know with this everything was you guys are guilty you need to prove your innocence and they were railroaded out and I couldn't believe it when I saw it after taking all these other IA cases and um, now we're starting to see that you know, there's a reason why, which is Schultz did not want DOJ to come in and start peeling back the layers of that onion to see all this stuff that's going on. And what the, the state auditor's report uh, has put forward, the city auditor's report has put forward in terms of the financial improprieties, and now the city inspector general's report is coming out. And I believe they're going to be naming names on that. So. Wasn't there an, uh, an investigation of this incident and, the, and these two officers were initially cleared? So Doyle was initially investigated they did an internal, he was cleared, and then they did a second investigation in which Dole, Wooliver was then named as a, as a target. So Wooliver was only investigated once, Doyle was investigated twice. Next one. Yes. I, I had one minute, and you touched on it a little bit, but a lot, so a lot of APD officers have been involved in shootings, questionable shootings, ended up in lawsuits. Right. Cost millions of dollars. But nothing's happening. Yeah. In fact, one's on the promotion list. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how, how do you sort of explain that? Like, Doyle and Wolliver, have they ever been involved in a shooting, or? The different, no, neither of them have been involved in a shooting. And Doyle is a uh, retired police officer from Philadelphia. He spent 20 years on the street in Philadelphia, which bad parts of Philadelphia make the worst parts of Albuquerque look like a, you know, daycare center, okay? Mm -hmm. No officer-involved shooting, no in-custody deaths, um, no apprehension by death. Okay, so this is a guy that knew how to use physical force to apprehend somebody rather than terminate them. Um, it's two things that led to this. It's the timing, which is DOJ was doing their pre-investigation of APD, and we had a video. Because we all know there's plenty of other times where force was used during 2011, but this one had the video, and this was the opportunity that Schultz could say, hey, look, I'm going to be tough with these guys because these guys deserve it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his representations about, you know, uh, Bloom was that he was a mere traffic offender, a mere car thief, and that wasn't the case at all. And Doyle recognized him. I mean, Bloom had been promoted throughout APD on the Viper list, had been, um, you know, wanted suspect, one of APD's most highly sought suspects, uh, by rope, by gangs, by intel. So, okay. for Schultz to couch it was, I mean, it was like, what are you doing? So, mm -hmm. cool. Tom, who was recording that incident? It was the uh, Barcelona Suites Hotel. Oh, it was the surveillance, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah, it was Doyle guy. Did they explain why did they chest bump each other? I they didn't chest bump. What happened? Doyle, uh, Wooliver was completely gassed out. If you if you met Rob, you'd understand, yeah, that guy can't run 100 yards. And so he was completely gassed out, and when he lurched up off of him, um, Doyle went over and was like, hey, you know, are you okay? They didn't do the NBA football spike or chest bump or anything like that. And that was, you know, that was fabricated. Um, and promoted out straight from the fifth floor. Didn't they? Didn't they eventually? That's been they've back completely on backed off yeah. of that. And you yeah. notice there was no mention about that today. I was going to say, uh, okay. Kathy didn't mention no, that. no, because that whole notion came from Alan Banks and was said directly to Jeff Proctor up at the fifth floor when they did, when they released that video. Not bad. It's cool to see. I haven't seen your action yet. So. <laughs> <laughs>